So here we are in Scotland. Um, quite different, I think you'll agree, to Calcutta. <laughs> so what I've learned now, now I've spent some time in a Calcutta taxi. So the only way to drive is like that. <laughs> so I've made contact with another descendant of the Slessers, and I'm hoping he might have more information about Harriet's grandmother and her family. So we're on our way there now. Hello, Geordie. Yes, hello. Hello, Olivia. Thank How you nice so to meet you. much. <laughs> Welcome to the Highlands. Me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Come on in. Thank you very much. I'll see you. I've never Did you enjoy India. Loved it. Yes, it was amazing. Now, Olivia, come with me. I've dug some stuff out for you, which oh, I think you will enjoy. Thank you. Give me your coat there. Oh. Thank look you after very that much. You. Thank you. <laughs> um, do you know how we are related? Because I well, couldn't work it yes, out. Yes, because I've dug up these documents. It's done me a good turn because I've had to look at them all again. And um, I think, I'm pretty sure of this now, that we're both five generations down from Harriet Elizabeth. Oh, OK. Yeah. Because Harriet Elizabeth, she changes the course of my great-great-great-grandmother, Harriet's life. Brings her to England when her father dies, but she's sort of in the background yeah. doing things, and I ah, want well, to know more about her. I've got a portrait of her for you. No. And I can tell you a lot about her. What, an actual picture-picture? Picture? Sure, sure, here she is. She's a splendid-looking person. Oh, wow. Very faded, but she's very much there, isn't she? Beautiful With picture. her bonnet and her fichu. Gosh. It's so lovely to see her. She had a very extraordinary life. Harriet Elizabeth lived most of her married life in Portugal, where her husband was serving in the army. She left a series of diaries and letters, starting in the late 18th century, which were later typed up. A bit I think you'd be really interested in is when um, Harriet Elizabeth brings her two sons, William, aged nine. Harriet's father. Yep. And his elder brother, John Henry, and aged 11, to school in England. She spent nine months trying to find the right school. And you get the sort of complete devotedness she had to her oh. children. And here we are. These letters are written to John. So you is you know, John? Yeah, her son. OK. Yeah. You and William were come to an age for school. How to reconcile the act of separation? <gasps> and here is the day she leaves, and she has to say goodbye to them and return to Portugal to her husband and their three younger siblings. Mrs Girardot, Oh, Mrs. Girardot, so I, I know her name. That's Harriet, grandmother's sister, yeah. Louisa Girardot. Yeah. So she left a small fortune for India, Harriet. She left a small fortune? Yes. Oh, I love that. Mrs. Girardot was the only sister I might venture to hope might take you home for the holidays. The chaise was at the door to take us away. Oh, that's the coach. I could not resist the impulse. We were both crying in each other's arms. This is awful. I exclaimed, look at my dear boys. So, that's the same age as my boys. Do but say you will be kind to them. If you knew the pang I feel at parting with them, oh, you will not refuse some comfort by the answer I so anxiously wish for. You might have to carry on. <laughs> Mrs Girardot seemed as much afflicted as I was. Oh. She promised all that was kind. Oh, good. And it's brilliant, isn't it? And Would see, act as a mother towards you. Oh. Strictly, she kept her word. Yes. Well, I didn't know that. It's obviously, it's very distressing, but it does come across how much she loved them. It's sort of always assumed that, you know, that people have told her, put herself together, chin up, stiff up a lip, mm. and it's so nice to see her. Well, it's not nice that she... <laughs> but they obviously suffered the same pain as we did, and they didn't always keep their mouths shut. She's telling, she's really expressing how she felt, and... Mm. At least she had her sister there. Yes, wonderful that she had her there. So one painful departure is very tough for you, but I'm afraid you've got another one here, uh, Olivia. She was also saying goodbye to her mother. The yeah. Harriet Elizabeth's mother? Yeah, who she didn't see very often because she lived in Oporto and her mother lived in London. She was an old lady. She was 81. Oh. And she was saying goodbye to her. And it's probably easiest if you actually read from here. You will not have forgot the distress of parting with my mother. So still talking to John, William's brother and how difficult it was to tear ourselves from her last embrace. Oh. She lamented that she would never see us more. I think I see her sitting in her wheelchair with a little black bonnet pulled over her eyes to hide her tears, for she was crying bitterly. Oh. So this poor woman, 
Do you know more about her and what her name was? Indeed. And I've got a portrait of her upstairs. Would you like to see it? Yes! Come please. on, let's go. So I bring this? <laughs> bring that with you. Just in case. <laughs> Just you never know how long you might need it for. <laughs> Splendid. Follow me, Olivia. And we've got all the ancestors up here. Wow! And the one you're interested in is her up there. And we're going to get a proper look at her. Here she is. And Judith Bristol. Oh, wow! We left her the old lady with the bonnet to hide her tears. Yeah. There she's when she's married, I Young guess. Woman. 1740s, I think. That's her. And that's our husband, John Bristow, wow. MP in Norwich, in Norfolk. No! Because my dad's family all from Norfolk. So Anne, Judith Bristow, is my great, 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 great grandmother. Wow. And Anne Judith, she, she wasn't born uh, British, she was naturalised, and this is the document that explains her naturalisation very shortly after her marriage. Oh! In this present Parliament assembled, Anne Judith Bristow, wife of John Bristow, Esquire, and daughter of Paul Foissin... Foissin. Foissin. Foissin by Louisa, his wife, born at Paris in the Kingdom of France. French? Yes, 100%. Oh! So she's the French woman. Oh my God! And why was she having to be or wanting to be naturalised? Well, she was a French Huguenot. She was Protestant. She was a French Protestant, yeah. From the late 17th century, tens of thousands of Huguenots fled oppression in Catholic France and sought refuge in Britain. In fact, the French Huguenots were the first refugees who carried the name refugee. Yes. Really? Yeah. Now, at the very beginning of this, my mum said, I, don't, I think there's somebody was French once, but I thought it was more recent. I love the idea that families remember things know, this remember, long back. We don't write it down. I didn't remember that anyone was Indian, but they've said, <laughs> there was a French one once. How exciting! Wow. It ha it's, been, it's been an incredible journey of discovery. To find out about the family that I never would have known about. And I have loved that feeling, of feeling like a... It just feels like we're honouring them. I thought there was nobody exotic in my family, ever. I was so wrong. <laughs> and the spread over the world. Portugal, India, France, and St Helena. <laughs> that I had to look up on a map because I had no idea where that was. Yeah, I had no idea. And it is, it's so fragile. Once you've gone, you don't want to be forgotten. I suppose I've always considered myself not adventurous, but then I've never been tested like they were tested. And when they were up against it, they did what they had to do. It's really humbling. I'm still incredibly proud of being from Norfolk. That will never go. But it's so exciting, finding out this stuff. It gives you a little bit of uh, confidence. And uh, I've got to try and be a little braver now, and I don't let them down. <laughs>